Okay, this video is a follow-up to my choosing a monitor video. This is more about setting up your monitor in Windows. But the first thing to talk about is calibration. And I've calibrated both of my monitors using the Data Spider, sorry, Data Color Spider X. This costs around hundred pounds. It's a USB device and it hangs in front of your monitor. And this, this, uh, this bit here has a camera on it, which will read the screen back to itself. So it can record what it's outputting. Okay, so on my small monitor, on my non-HDR, my 60 Hertz VA panel, it makes the blacks look really nice and dark. So despite being such a cheap monitor, it can actually make the picture look really nice. As I say though, not HDR. Calibrating my HDR monitor, I found I needed to do, turn the HDR off for it to actually calibrate. It kicked out some weird errors when I tried calibrating it with the HDR switched on. So first thing, calibrate with HDR off. The other tip, you have to make sure you've got the color gamut set correctly. Now the, the, the software asks you whether you've got a wide color gamut monitor or not. When I first calibrated it, I said no, because it, when I was looking around, it seemed to suggest that wide, wide color was something different to HDR. Uh, and not all HDR monitors do have wide color gamut, but mine does. So you do need to actually select that. When I originally calibrated, I, I calibrated it without it. And then when I turned HDR on and when I was trying to play games, I was seeing the oversaturation you see with um, HDR. However, when I've calibrated it with wide color gamut on, it does work much better. Now, when it does the calibration, it goes into full screen. So, and it will push out more colors than the normal sRGB range. So you will get the, uh, and in this case, in my case, it's about 89% of, of P3. And it is able to measure that. So, so even though HDR is turned off, it's still able to push those colors out and it is able to measure them. Now I briefly mentioned turning on HDR in Windows. So how do we do that? Just click Windows, easiest way, type HDR, and you get Windows color settings pop up there. Click that, the Windows settings. You can select each of your monitors here. So I've got two monitors. First off, I'm gonna look at the other one first. So this is my little monitor. And you can see here, this is telling you what Windows thinks the capabilities are of the monitor. So this is all correct. It's not HDR and it can't do wide color gamut. So it says, no, no, no. Switch on to this one. It does have the capabilities. Now you can flick that on and off. You can have stream off while HDR's on, but you can't have it the other way around. And then you get this, also get this brightness control here. So when you calibrate, I tend to find that it wants you to be, first off, you should calibrate it in as dark a room as possible. Software's a little bit ambiguous. When it wants you to turn the light right down in your room. Now it's not clear whether it intends that you use it in those conditions or whether it's just to calibrate it. However, I found if I turned all the lights off, it does make a better job of calibrating it, even if I'm going to be using it during the day or when the lights are on. So do it at night with the lights off and it'll get, um, it'll, it'll do a better job. Um, what, but what will tend to happen is it'll tell you to have it a lot brighter than you, you might want. I find it a little bit too bright, but when you've got HDR on, you can use this slider to, to turn up or turn down the brightness. When HDR's on, Windows will make some blacks seem more gray. So if I bring up Resolve and we look at it across both monitors, what you see is this is a lot lighter than this. Now, this is still dark. This is dark black. So you can still display a really dark black there. And this is like this sort of charcoal here, this is, I mean, I would, I would call this sort of a light black where this, I'm sort of saying this is more like gray and that's what HDR does. Um, I'm recording this a matter of days before windows 11 comes out and windows 11 supposedly supports better HDR in that it will turn HDR on when you're playing HDR games, that kind of thing. But we'll, we'll see, and I'll probably do a video on that when, when, it, when it comes out. Uh, what, another, another, another thing we need to look at is browser support. Now, 
down here you can see I've got these four browsers. These three here, so Microsoft's Edge, Google Chrome, and the Brave browser, those are all derived from Chromium. So Chromium is a sort of open source project. And then they might be based on different versions and they put their own features in. So, so Brave is more concerned with privacy. Google obviously ties in nicely with all of Google's so other services. And then, there's, and then there's the Edge browser. These three do support HDR. Chromium supports HDR. These do. Um, Opera is also based on Chromium. So that also will support HDR. So basically Chromium supports it and anything derived from it will support it. Firefox is not to derive from Chromium and it does not support HDR. Safari does support it. Um, it's not based on Chromium. It's based on another open source project which you've probably not heard of it but it probably traces and can probably trace its roots back to conqueror which used to be my favorite browser a long long time ago firefox i've been many, using it for many years uh, basically i think it's version one but for hdr it's basically a non-starter at the moment you know they're not they've not implemented it yeah and oh we do have internet explorer as well that will not support it and internet explorer will be being discontinued and is going to be integrated as a legacy mode inside of edge is what i've heard so I've collected together a bunch of videos on YouTube which are in HDR. Now a lot of it is like copyrighted stuff, so I'm I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna play it play it back. Um, there's this this training video here which I'll link to below. This is actually quite a good video because it's recorded in HDR, so it's got a chap recording a video of himself in HDR, but also looking at screens where he's working on HDR on hdr content it's actually quite interesting and it's quite a good video in if you're interested in hdr editing it's quite useful for that um, it is based on an older version of resolve so um there's that but um still it's a good video to check out if you i don't know if you can see it but in this down here it does say hdr there and you can change the resolution but you can't choose to not have it in hdr if you disable it in windows it should give you the non-hdr versions and just by way of example, if I paste that in there, we'll get this video up again in Firefox. If we look at it down here, you can go up to 1440p or 4K in non-HDR. There is no option to turn HDR on because we're in Firefox and it doesn't support it. Um, YouTube knows whether the browser supports it, so it will offer the appropriate content. However, you should be aware that if your HDR display isn't very good and you've got HDR switched on, you might get a worse experience under HDR. Um, a couple a couple more things while we're at it. While most monitors don't support HDR or don't support it very well, there are other device there are other devices that do. I mean some tellies, for example, but also fairly recent phones. So this is a this is two years old. This is a OnePlus 7 Pro and it supports HDR. The camera isn't HDR, but the, the screen is HDR. And you can see it's very bright there, and that's because it doesn't support local dimming. So that's that same video. Because the video is calling for the brightness, the whole screen has brightened. Another option, this is actually the, this is the first Apple product I've bought since the iPod video. This is the iPad Pro. This is a 12-inch version. It can display a 1,000 nits and has local dimming on it. So... An iPad Pro is probably one of the best places to watch HDR com content on, and it supports Dolby Vision as well. Obviously, an iPad Pro costs quite a lot of money. You know, this one costs about twelve hundred pounds. If you're looking for the top end, a, a, you know, a top end HDR experience right now, this is probably one of the best options. A thousand nits monitor will cost you a lot more than this. So, as ever, I hope this has been useful to you, and uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.